I thought it was an excellent idea, uh, something that's really needed, that if people are going to be going into ministry, they need to know how to manage money, both for themselves and within the church or nonprofit that they're leading. So, and I saw that this was a, something that was not in the current curriculum. So we needed something that would help students uh, really at kind of two levels. First, a theological understanding of money uh, wealth and the management or stewardship of wealth, and then also practical um, guidance as to how to manage money both in one's own personal life and in the church. So I thought it was, it was really, um, it's really a good idea, it's necessary. Um, it's something that our students, I think, will find very valuable as they move into ministry. It's a hard question because uh, denominations are often strapped for cash, as are uh, individual congregations. And so, I mean, since compensation for clergy comes from denomination and or uh, congregations, uh, both of those need money. Um, so I think it's, there's not too much the seminary can do about that um, other than to encourage people to fulfill their fiscal responsibilities as congregants or members of denominations. But I think what we, what we can do in terms of preparing people for ministry is to help people to be realistic about uh, what their finances are going to be as clergy and also to recognize that the, the tendency right now or kind of the movement that's happening uh, within denominations is toward more bivocational ministers. So people who are not really full-time, but are working other, another job or sometimes even other jobs. And so how do people uh, who are ministers uh, balance the demands of their own work uh, apart from their congregation with the demands of work in the congregation? Um, and to do that kind of balance in a way that's responsible towards both. I think that's a real challenge and it's something that we need to be preparing our students to, first of all, realist realistically acknowledge that that's going to be their context for a lot of them uh, and then how to manage that. What we're going to see in the future in terms of clergy, uh, I think, is probably more and more clergy who are bivocational. I mean, that's the trend nationally. Um, and part of that's related to declining membership in local churches. So I think people need, we need to be realistic about that. People going into the ministry need to be realistic about that. So what does, what does that actually look like for clergy when they're holding down another job, uh, but also trying to minister within a church. And part of that will also be, I think, educating uh, members of congregations about what they can realistically expect. So if you don't have a full-time professional clergy, um, what can you expect from a clergy? So and I also though think that there's a movement as well towards more and more folks graduating with uh, MDiv degrees Master of Divinity degrees who will not uh, pastor within a traditional uh, congregational setting, but rather they'll be involved with nonprofit work or they'll be doing chaplaincy uh, in a prison, a hospital, uh, even places of business. And so those folks also need to be aware of um, what are the financial constraints and opportunities within each of each of those settings. So I think this class, the 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 financial leadership um, preparation for our students is just absolutely crucial so that they can, again, think about uh, and be prepared for their own personal financial issues, uh, but also that they become good stewards of the financial resources of whatever congregation or other ministry setting that they happen to be in. From the birth of time but you 
I think, I mean, the ethical component of finance is crucial. If, uh, we're, if we're training people to be ministers, uh, they need to be handling money and, and the financial management of an institution in a way that is consistent with the gospel. And the gospel, I think, has uh, two kind of approaches to finance, money, wealth. One is that it's a good and it's necessary for human life but two, that it's a great danger, uh, that it can be corrupting, uh, and that it can distract us from uh, the practice of the gospel. So we always have to hold those two kind of intention with each other. Um, so it's absolutely crucial that we think about the ethical dimensions of the money that we have, both as persons and as institutions, and how do we spend our resources? Who are we spending our resources on, and how are they being spent? And also, how are we, um, how are we getting money? Um, how do we raise money uh, within the context of a congregation or some other ministry? So, and I think this is where um, the, the people who teach at MTS can be so helpful because as far as I know, every professor who's here uh, has worked or is working within a congregational setting or some other ministry. And so we're all very aware of the importance of money for doing ministry. If you don't have money, it's hard to do ministry. It's hard, to, I mean, how do you uh, fund the programs that you want to be doing? How do you pay the bills of a, of a building of, or whatever you have to be paying bills for? Um, so you have to raise money, and then what do you do with the money when it's raised? And how do you do that in ways that are consistent with being a disciple of Jesus Christ? Well, those are tough questions. And I think it's really important that before we get uh, into the actual practice of ministry that we've thought carefully about those and seen different ways that those kinds of things can be addressed with, within ministry.